I'm Anil Kumar and this video will understand how to analyze a cumulative frequency graph. Now I'll sketch a cumulative frequency graph for addition of two numbers when a pair of dice is thrown like this. So we'll perform an experiment. We'll throw this pair of dice a couple of times. Note the number, make a tally chart. From there we'll find out the frequency and then make a frequency graph. Let us say here we have a frequency graph from this experiment. So for this graph we know that sum of two numbers on this pair of die each has from 1 to 6 could be 1 1. So, so sum we could get lowest as 2 right and maximum could be 6 plus 6 12. So along the x-axis let me write down the sum right so we'll write sum on the x-axis so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve so twelve could be the maximum sum and each division is of one so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11 and 12 so the maximum sum is 12 minimum you know could be only 2 now when we perform this experiment number of times we'll make a tally chart and then we'll write down how many times did we get which sum so let's put that sum on number of times we get that sum on the y-axis so let's say these numbers here indicate the numbers in units of 5. So 5 times, 10 times, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, let us say 40. Okay. So that is the number of times. So, or the frequency, we, could, we should actually call this frequency. Okay. So at the end of the experiment, we actually get a cumulative graph, for example. And let us say the cumulative graph for us looks something like this. Since we did total of 40 trials, so the maximum number of times you could get these sums is total is 40 so that's the total number of times we got so ultimately it was 40 and then let us say initially we got five times we got five okay and um, then when we added it it kind of made a graph which was kind of like this let us say and let us say this is our cumulative frequency graph for this experiment where we are showing sum of a pair of dice. Now the question is, you are given this cumulative frequency graph. From this frequency graph, how can you answer these questions? For example, A is uh, number of times you got 10. How many times did you get 10? Let us say. So you have to find out how many times, we say number of times, sum equals to 10. Let us say that is one thing which we want to find. How do we find that? Or how do we find the median from this cumulative frequency graph? How can we calculate first quartile? How can we calculate third quartile medium you know is second quartile right how can you do these calculations from the cumulative frequency graph that is what we are going to understand in this particular video now let's begin with with the sum of 10 now from this graph you can easily go back and read the number of times cumulative frequency for 11 and also for 10 right kind of like this so when you go here then you know this number on the left 
indicates 35 and this number here if you read this it is closer to 40 so let me assume this number to be 39 okay so from here we see that 12 cumulative frequency for 12 is 40 for 11 it is 39 that means you got 12 as sum only once right so so we can do reverse calculations we say well in this case the sum of 12 was only once 40 take away 39 now if I do 39 take away 35 then I know sum for 11 is 39 take away 35 is 4 so definitely for 10 what we have to do is we have to check what happened for 9 right so we'll go to this line number of times you get 9 will go up and see where it cuts the cumulative graph and from there we can let's say this is for convenience I'm taking this value okay and what we observe here is that the difference between the cumulative frequency of 9 and 10 is actually the number of times you got 10 so it should be 35 minus 30 so it is 35 minus 30 which is 5 times so during this experiment which was performed 40 number of times 5 times we got sum of 12 you see that so so we can do the reverse calculation and build the frequency chart from here so let that be an exercise for you okay now let's talk about the medians now before getting into medians we need to understand percentile when we say median that means we're talking about 50 percent of the time right 50 percent first quartile means 25 percent and third quartile means 75 percent so what we can do is we can convert these values into percentile and then find the answer for q2 q1 and q3 now q2 should be 50 percent that means 50 out of 100 of total which is 40 right so that gives us the value for median or second quartile right so it is half of 40 which is 20 correct 50 percent of 40 is 20 so to get this answer what we can do is at 20 we can draw a horizontal line and then bring it down so that seems to be at 7 so for us the value for median is is equal to 7 so the sum of 7 indicates the median in this particular experiment similarly we can find q1 which you would also write as in decimals we could write this as 0 0.25 times 40 right so quarter of this which seems to be quarter of this is 10 Okay, quarter of 40 and we can find the third quartile as 75 percent of 40 okay so like this we can do this is three times so it becomes 30 right so you can use calculator to calculate these values so in our experiment we found that from frequency graph we could actually get the quartiles by finding the percentiles so at times what you can also do is you can graph or plot another line here to indicate percentiles so we'll just write percentiles here right so we'll write percentiles right and what we calculated was that the number here should be 100% right 20 
was 50 percent. Then is 25 percent and 30 is 75 percent. You get it. And these percentiles give you the value of quartiles directly, right? So from here, we can write down our answers. So we know that Q1 is 25% of 40, which is 10, okay? So for 10, the value is, the sum was 4. Do you see that? So this value of 4 represents the first quartile for the third quartile 75 percent we get 30 so 30 is for if you draw this line bring it back you get 9 as your answer so that is 9 correct so that is how you can actually calculate the quartiles from here now as an exercise what you can do is you can actually plot the box and the whisker diagram correct so which we can do here now so we have this box we know the quartiles which are the so median in this case is 7 q1 is 4 q3 is 9 so here we have a value which is let me write down these values here in a different ink okay this is better so q1 this q1 is at 4 okay Q3 is 9, 7 is kind of here, we can draw a line here, 7, okay, this is Q2, and the limits which we have are from 2 to 12, right, so, so this number is 2, and that number is 12. What is interquartile range in this case? Let us calculate interquartile range also interquartile range is 9 minus 4 which is 5 correct now let us also check if these values are outliers or not I've just written them but if they're outliers we'll develop a modified box and whisker diagram now to find the outliers what we should do is we should find what is 1.5 times 5 right so so let's calculate what is 1.5 times 5. So the lower limit should be uh, for the outliers. Let's calculate, okay? Now, for the lower limit, it should be 4 minus 1.5 times 5. That is equal to what? Let's see. So 4 minus 1.5 times 5 gives us a negative value right minus 3.5 that means it is not an outlier and for the other extreme on the right hand side the upper bound it should be 9 plus 1.5 times 5 right so let's calculate this also 9 plus 1.5 times 5 equals to in decimals 16.5 so upper bound is much higher limit for outliers so basically what we really find is that the lower bound or the lowest bound is this so this is the lowest or we can say lower boundary and that's the upper bound and in this experiment we really do not have any outliers correct so here in this video you learn how to do the reverse calculations, how to find frequency from cumulative frequency, how to find percentiles. So this is the percentiles. Percentiles are related directly with the quartiles. And then from there, we can actually sketch the box and whisker diagram also. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope this video helps you to understand the concepts. So we'll take a few review questions to understand or to practice these concepts. I'm Adil Kumar. You can always share and subscribe my videos. Thank you and all the best.